the preservatives BHA or butylated hydroxy anisole and BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, are added to cereals, chewing gum, baked goods, butter, potato chips, and many more food items to prevent fats from oxidizing. So essentially, they're there to extend the shelf life of certain foods. Now, they are recognized by the NIH as possible human carcinogens, so possibly cancer-causing, and they are listed as carcinogens on California's Prop 65. They are also banned in Europe, Japan, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, right? However, the FDA considers them safe. They find it's okay to be used in contact with food, so to preserve food. And um, I think this is very messed up. You know, we are supposed to have a government agency that, you know, watches out for the health of the population, that says, look, this is something that some agencies and many countries recognize as a cancer-causing ingredient. So we should at least alert people of it. It doesn't always have to be that stuff is banned, right? But we can have labels on it. You know, you can have label on your potato chips saying, hey, this contains BHA and BHT. This is a possible human carcinogen. So your choice if you want to buy this or not. Or you can buy this bag of some organic potato chips that doesn't have it in it, right? And it's your choice. You will pay a higher price for the item that doesn't have the preservatives, but it's really your choice of what you want to do. That would be, I think, a good solution to this in the meantime, right? Down the line, I'm hoping that we will take some of these uh, known or possible carcinogens off the market entirely. Um, you know, I think it is not responsible, you know, of us to allow having this circulating, right? Not, not everybody's going to read the label. That's the whole thing of it, right? And we should say, look, whatever you buy in a supermarket should be, in my opinion, safe for consumption. That means we should not increase our risk of disease by buying things at the, at the grocery store, right? Maybe alcohol and cigarettes, whatever you can buy there, but we're talking about food items, right? So it's not just, you know, BHA and BHT. There's, there's many others that are problematic, you know? When we talk about um, plastic items, and I talk about plastic chemicals all the time, right? You know, BPA, if there's no BPA, then it's usually BPS or BPF, which are certainly problematic. These um, chemicals, and BHA and BHT are included, uh, are endocrine dis disruptors. So what does that mean? They disrupt hormones. Now, we have seen over the last 50 to 60 years a dramatic decrease in testosterone in men, for example. Fertility is down in both men and women, right? We talk about more uh, people having issues, you know, with uh, gender confusion and whether that is something that just wasn't recognized yet, whether it's socially, whether it's influenced by chemicals, I don't know. I cannot make any statements there. But I think we should look into this, right? Is this a possible contributor to what we're experiencing right now? And that's something that, uh, again, we, we, we got to recognize anything that is a hormone disruptor. I am very concerned, especially when children are exposed to this. And I talked in other videos about uh, uh, pregnant women um, consuming things that are heated in plastic, and that would include the Starbucks cup, right? The paper cup that's lined with plastic, you know? If that's heated, obviously, with your hot coffee in there, you are consuming massive amounts of these plastic chemicals, right? Phthalates and bisphenols. And that these are endocrine disruptors. And especially for a developing baby, that is hugely problematic in their actual development, you know? Of, you know, this is a crucial time in, in development of a child. Uh, where hormone disruptors can cause a lot of problems for uh, life later on. All these chemicals that we're exposed to need to be at least labeled. I think we should have transparent labels on everything saying, hey, this contains the following uh, uh, problematic ingredients. Here are what we think they're linked to. Your choice if you buy them or not, or if you want to spend more money and buy something that does not contain these. But I think that needs to be done. I mean, it's ridiculous that we have a government agency like the FDA who is really making a lot of compromises, in my opinion, right? I think this the number one uh, concern of a government agency should be the health of the consumer. But it seems to me that the compromise with the industry takes precedent here, that that's more important, right? In the end, then, we, the consumer, suffer because obviously these are issues that, uh, you know, we uh, uh, don't we don't want our um, health to be negatively impacted by what we buy in the grocery store. The same thing goes for things like glyphosate. And I did videos about this in um, Europe. Many countries, not all of them, but many countries have banned glyphosate or are phasing it out at the moment. Germany actually still allows it in certain areas, but they're also phasing it out. They've recognized that glyphosate is problematic. And when you spray crops with it, the stuff, you just can't wash that off. I mean, once it's in there, it's in the soil, it's in the plant, you know, you, you, you're consuming it, right? And it is also a possible human carcinogen. You know, uh, we don't know about its impact on hormone disruption. There's, there's a lot of speculation there, but obviously it's been shown in at least laboratory studies to be problematic, right? It, it is damaging. And um, again, we should label it, you know, when you buy baked goods, um, besides BHA and BHT possibly being in there, were the crops sprayed with glyphosate, you know? 
was atrazine used? That's definitely a hormone disruptor. I talked about that one as well. Atrazine is still used in, in the United States. I think it's banned in Europe since 2003. We still use it, right? And again, why is the FDA not becoming more involved in this? Because these are really problematic ingredients. If you don't want to ban them outright, fine, but then uh, make the consumer aware, label it, we make our own choices. I think that's one thing that uh, we can definitely do. So I think uh, the FDA needs to do better. I, I think we might need another agency to, to intervene here and really alert the consumer of these issues. Because it's very confusing. You go to a grocery store, you read the label on some products, there's like 50 to 100 ingredients. You know, how, do you, how do you know in the end what's a, what's a problem and what isn't? It's, it's, it's exhausting. If the label states clearly the following ingredients may cause health issues, then we can make choices. And I think that's the way to go. Of course, we will probably have to pay more for products. But I think, uh, honestly, I would prefer, um, you know, even in this, you know, economic, economically difficult time to buy smaller quantities of foods that are free from carcinogens and endocrine disruptors um, rather than buying cheap large amounts of foods that are filled with uh, carcinogens and other toxins that I think we should not consume.